Hello, Solarloon here, and here's a tutorial um, video I'm going to make, or I'm making rather, or that I'm putting on YouTube, um, about using the Sound to Control module, which is the new module that was added to Sunvox version 1.7.4. Um, it's very useful because it, it allows you to use a amplitude, or I guess you could say a, a waveform or a signal from a module to um, alter a parameter on another module or using the multi-control module to alter the parameters on multiple modules so it's pretty useful all right so um, i'm going to basically be stepping through the different parameters and how to use it it's pretty simple to set up it's just a matter of kind of understanding how uh, what the different options do and i'm not like 100 percent positive on everything yet but it's uh i think i have a kind of a general idea here so anyway let's go ahead and see uh, what we got here this is a little example song that i set up It's not really a song, it's just a very simple example little loop. Um, so I have a drum loop happening here, uh, this, and then I have the basically block chord of a square wave here. Right, so what we're going to do is basically alter this square wave's, uh, this analog generator's parameters, one of them, using the signal from the drum loop. So we're going to add in our sound to control module. And so the first thing we're going to do is basically set this up beforehand before we actually connect it to the analog generator. So we're, we're going to connect the drum uh, sampler, the drum loop sampler, to the sound to control module. And then we're going to basically determine which one of these par parameters we want to change before we actually go ahead and do it, um, before we connect it. So we want to change the duty cycle, which is 8. So we're going to go over here and set the out controller to 8. And you might be wondering why, and that's because when the sound control module is connected to a module, as you can see, it sets the out module to be analog generator, the out controller to be duty cycle, and the out values to be 0 to 1, uh, 1024, or, or a full range. And it also does this all the time. So if we were to, for example, uh, connect it and then loop or step through the out controller from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3, it would set all these to 0 because the sampler isn't playing anything. And so you might think, well, that's kind of a bug. Well, I don't know, I don't know because you can still do things here. You, know, you can still play samples here or on a keyboard. And so uh, this kind of needs to be live anyway. So anyway, we have uh, it all set up here. So when the sampler plays, it's going to send its signal out to the sound control module. It's going to alter the analog generator's duty cycle using this uh, um, using its signal. So we have a few different parameters here. The first parameter is sampling rate in Hertz. So that, so that is how often the sound to control module will sample the input module to alter the output module. So when we have it here, it's going to be set to, for example, um, one Hertz. And so I, I believe this is the number that we're actually going to be using. And this is the number in hexadecimal. So that's 621 times per second. That's 2,060 times per second, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the less you do this, the less, ch or the faster you do this, the more you do this, it's going to sound choppier because it's going to be sampling a lot. But the less you do this, the more likely it's going to miss the kind of intricacies and, and kind of in, uh, details of the signal. So, for example, in this drum loop, it's you know, got a lot of stuff going on. So if we have this sampling rate low, then it's not going to pick up all the individual, you know, hits and the volume changes. Stereo, um, if that's on, then it will use, I believe, both channels um, when it uh, alters the output module's parameter. If it's off, it'll only use the left channel. And so if your panning is set to zero or negative 128, then it'll sound normal. If you have it set to 128, basically it won't alter um, the output module's parameter so it will basically quote unquote turn off so i'm not sure what usefulness that is other than just i mean you know i guess if well i guess if you have something that has two channels that actually have dynamics in both and aren't just the same thing you know spread then uh having stereo on would be really useful because you could have you know kind of more pick up more of the individual details um okay now absolute is uh something else we're going to get back to that a little later once we actually see, see this running Gain is how much 
the volume uh, influences the output module uh, parameter. So the higher the gain, the more likely you're going to basically go from 100% to 0%, and the lower the gain, the more likely it's going to go from, you know, 0% um, to 10% or some, something to that effect. Basically, it's boosting the input module's signal before it actually uses that to um, alter the output module's parameter. Smooth, smooth is basically how smooth <laughs> the changes uh, take effect. So if you have this to 0, this is going to be very choppy. If you have this to 256, it's going to be very smooth. So you want to find something in between there, depending on you know your sampling rate and things like that. Um, algorithm, I, I assume that this is basically just how much um, CPU it's you know using. It can use a fast algorithm, which I guess uses less CPU power, but is kind of more inaccurate and has, it's uh, more choppy. Where the slow algorithm using uses more CPU power, I would assume, but um, you know, it gives more smooth, uh, I guess you could say, high quality results. And then you have the output. Uh, parameter minimum and maximum values and the output controller so you can use this to change as you can see the output values that are being used here so for example for a duty cycle of a square wave you probably don't want it to go from 0 or to 1024 because those extremes actually give no sound you have to have the duty cycle a little higher to uh, you know a little more than 0 to actually do that so we're going to boost this output minimum a little bit and change take down this output maximum a little bit. All right, so let's, <laughs> let's see how this works. So you see it's changing, but very slowly. That's because our sampling rate is so low. Let's change this to be a little higher. Okay, good. Now you notice that it's hanging toward the bottom of the duty cycle bar. Let's change this gain and boost it up so that it gets this entire range. Still good, but it's not going to the top, you notice. Um, I'm going to assume that this is because the drum loop isn't normalized, or it rather just doesn't hit. Uh, it is normalized. But it may be because of the individual peaks and valleys, it doesn't actually hit the um, you know, the, the maximum value, so to speak, for the sound to control module to really output this in a, you know, 0 to 100% 100 scale. So let's go ahead and amplify this before we send it to the sound to control module a little bit. Let's double the volume. And now let's see what happens. That's better. So you can, you know, alter this and kind of change it up so you have a little more you know, room to work with. You don't want to do something like this that kills the dynamic um, between the volume and the duty cycle changes because you notice that basically at this point it doesn't really change to it's not it's not getting a lot of values. It's like either 100% or, you know, in this range around here or around here. So, but then again, that's, that might be just the nature of the sample, you know. If it was like a sine wave or something more smooth, then it'd be different. But anyway, let's let's go back a little bit. So let's try up uh, changing the sampling rate in hertz to see uh, what a higher value does. You can hear it got it got scratchier, right? Yeah, you can hear it's really getting scratchy, it's really getting uh, choppy, uh, the effect changes. Whereas a lower sampling rate will be smoother, but then you won't, like I said, get as many details, because you're sampling evenly, um, you know, however much you set in hertz. So if it's one time per second, then it will sample only once. Okay, now let's go back and have this a little high so we can hear that choppiness. All right, now we can alter the smooth value here to, to kind of take out some of that choppiness. It will smooth out the changes between the, um, or the changes to the duty cycle. But as you do this, you'll basically be losing um, some of the dynamics, some of the range of changes. So instead of going from you know zero to one hundred percent and being choppy, it might go from twenty-five to seventy-five percent and be smooth. 
So you kind of have to pay attention to the smooth value and how much you actually use it. Yeah, so I mean, it, uh, it's smoother now, or at least I, I thought that I was, what I was going to do is I was going to lose, I was going to lose some of the uh, dynamics, but it looks like I'm keeping the dynamics, which is good, but it's just changing the you know, smoothness of it so that I don't hear the individual breaks as often or as easily. Um, you know, the drum basically starts and stops and starts and starts and stops. You know, you hear this break kind of poppy and, uh, I guess you could say blocky drums, uh, drum pattern going on. And you kind of lose that with the smooth setting high so that the uh you know generator's duty cycle is kind of going more smoothly and so if the drums were to stop the uh, duty cycle will kind of just like taper down slowly so that might not be what you want it might work well for what you, you know, need depending on what your synth is supposed to be doing Okay, and then obviously we have the out minimum and maximum, so we can change that to be the minimum value um, achieved by a low signal and the maximum value achieved by a high signal. Um, and obviously, you know, zero to 100% basically. I'm not sure exactly how much decibel or you know what's necessary to achieve like a full on 100% or full on zero. Well, zero is no volume basically, uh, no signal or a 0% volume, you know, signal being passed. Whereas, you know, like, for example, if in these breaks, that's when 0% is passed, and we achieve that 448 uh, duty cycle here. As you can see, it's pretty much right there. Okay, now the last thing I'm going to cover, basically, is this stereo, uh, not stereo, this absolute. Um, as far as I can tell, when absolute is off, well, when absolute is on, if there's no nothing playing, it goes to 0, or the minimum. If there's something playing, it's 100% volume, you know, um, you know, maximum volume, then it goes to the out maximum. So you have that range. When absolute is off, it's doing relative, which means that basically from this point to this point, it's going to drop. And then from this point to this point, it's going to stay the same because, you know, from no, from 0% volume to 0% volume, it's the same. Then from 0% volume to 100% volume or whatever signal this, you know, part of the drum loop is going to play, it's going to have a rise. So basically, rather than going by how loudly the sound is playing, I think it's going to be going by how loudly the sound changes. So you'll see the uh, difference. So you can see that basically it's hanging out toward the center um, of our output minimum and maximum, and then it's dropping by the difference between the uh, set, set signals volume from one frame or from one line to the next from one sample from one sample in the sampling rate to the next so i assume that if i were to drop the sampling rate to something slower then you might hear more of a pronounced effect no i you you lose that effect now why i'm going to assume here that's because as we drop the sampling rate we loop, uh, pick up less of the actual drum you know, like I said, the drum details. So we're losing the individual breaks and stuff. And so it's kind of picking up like, you know, instead of the 100% to 0% drop, it's picking up a, you know, 70%, 70%, you know, part where the drum was tapering off to a 25% where it's you know, coming back or something to that effect. So it's something that you have to kind of play around with. But, um, you know, it's it's definitely more uh, very powerful. And as you can see, this is something that you would have to do, you know, manually by hand by recording the... Um, you know, changes, you can do that manually. I'm not sure if I ever made a video about that. I might make a video about that next, uh, the ability to record um, in Sunbox. But uh, you'd have to do this manually, or you'd have to type in the parameter changes. So it's very nice to be able to do this just completely by a single module and have it done uh, automatically and by a computer that will do it 100% of the time, you know, consistently. So it's really nice.
All right, well, thank you very much for uh, watching. I've been Solar Loon, and this has been a little Sandbox tip video on how to use the Sound to Control module. Hopefully it's been useful, and if you have uh, found it to be, you know, of any use to yourself, uh, then have fun, you know, messing around with it and try making stuff in Sunbox. Um, if you feel like, I have a Patreon page. I'm going to put it in the description where you can go ahead and, you know, if you like my videos and like what I'm making, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, contribute a little bit for every little thing I make, the car you know, any cartoon or, you know, game or video or something, you know, not just video, but <laughs> game or cartoon or t uh, tutorial video or things like that. All right, well, anyway, thanks again for watching, and uh, you have fun.